All right, welcome back to my studio again. Today we're going to be taking another look at the K1 extruder because I just realized I should have tried something that was really obvious. But first, I need to fix my sign there. Someone pointed out that it's off by a couple of degrees. All right, does that look pretty good to you? Is that better, Mr. Guy in the comments section? So in the last episode, I kind of put two and two together and I kind of figured out that this Creality K1 extruder was roughly based on the LGX Lite. What I should have done at the time is just taken the LGX light off of here and seen if it just fits right into the, uh, the K1 there. So that's what we're going to try today. And this will also be a good opportunity to show you how this Sherpa Mini extruder insert works. So here's our whole Sherpa Mini adapter assembly. It worked quite well, but we're trying something else now. So I really want to see if this LGX light just fits right in here and it just barely doesn't here's our lgx light it could fit in right there but there's these two little rails on the left and the right that are preventing it from fitting oh by the way here's how the lgx lights um, tension setting mechanism works you've got this little dog bone piece that connects the two extruder gears together and then that attaches up here, so it pivots about this little joint. So the small amount of motion is enough to set the gear tension. It's really clever. I like this mechanism. If we pull out our gears, oh man, this is just constructed masterfully. I love these Bond Tech products. So a big difference between this and the Creality extruder is that these gear shafts are supported on both ends. So you call that a double shear axle. So instead of having the doubly supported gear shafts like in this LGX light on the Creality extruder, these uh, gears are just held on with a shoulder bolt right here. So we just screw these two shoulder bolts in place. Now this is committing a sin of mechanical design. Basically you never want to have a bolt loaded in bending. So what do I mean by that? Um, basically, if you have a bolt, if I attach it to something, like let's just kind of thread it into this plastic piece. So there's two ways to load a bolt in which it is very strong. So one is tension. If I try to pull this bolt out, it's, it takes a lot of force to do so. The other way to load up a bolt is in shear. So you can see I've got like this sliding surface and when I butt it up here, um, it's basically trying to shear this bolt off right here. It's like a pair of scissors trying to shear that bolt. So you can see if I push on this with a lot of force it won't do anything because you basically have to shear off that entire metal piece in order to get it to move. Now the worst way you can load a bolt is in bending. So that's like if I hold on to it out here and I push down on it. So we're causing a bending moment about where that bolt is attached in here. So when I push down, I can break that right out. It's very weak that way. So likewise here, we've got our bolts threaded in to our little uh, threaded shafts there. So when we load our filament into this extruder, now it's gripping onto this filament and you can see I can drive it back and forth. The issue here is that we're compressing this filament, we're squishing down on this filament, so we've got an equal and opposite reaction force pushing up against this top wheel and down against that bottom wheel. And how is that loading the shoulder bolt? Well, it's not loading the shoulder bolt in tension because that would be like me trying to pull this wheel off this way. So it's clearly not in tension. Since we're offset over this way, now we're in a bending situation. And bolts are very weak in bending. And as this extruder goes around and around and around, any eccentricity of the extruder wheels, if there's changes in the diameter of the filament or if you're rolling back and forth over it repeatedly, then you're basically getting cyclic loading on this uh, extruder mechanism. It's like wiggling a tooth out, you know, you're just wiggling it back and forth and back and forth and eventually these bolts work themselves loose. And I've noticed that on all of the extruders that I've taken apart, whenever I've taken apart these K1 extruders, no matter how much torque I put down initially, after running it for a little while, 
these bending loads on those bolts end up loosening them just because it's like wiggling a tooth out you know it's not really designed to handle that kind of force and it doesn't hold up to it very well so what are we going to do about that well i hope creality fixes it i mean they could hire me on as a design engineer and i would have this squared away in a week my rate is a thousand dollars an hour so just everyone in the comments let them know but in the meantime I think I'm just going to swap that out with our LGX extruder. Now we've got really nice access to everything here. I'm going to move the desk up just a little bit to make everything more ergonomical. So while we've got this here, I might as well just kind of show you how everything goes together here. Now normally, now normally this Creality extruder with its little stepper motor on the back. I'll just kind of get this all lined up so you can see how it fits in here. This is your extruder and it slots in just like this. Then you've got the three screws, one on the left side and two on the right side, and that holds everything together. Now I take this out and if I wanted to install my Sherpa Mini, I have my little printed guide, my little PTFE tube. This is how long it is. I might as well measure it in case Anyone's foolish enough to follow along at home. So here you can see we're just at about 65 millimeters. So 65 millimeters long on that uh, PTFE tube. That did the trick for me. So insert that into here. And then obviously you'd want the stepper motor attached. I took it off because I'm going to be using it for this other extruder install. But um, yeah, once you've got everything lined up, I'm going to take the PTFE tube out for now just to make this easier on myself. You just get everything lined up, you push it in there, and then you put those three bolts in. And it's easy as that. It's really not a difficult mod. The way that I designed this CAD model, everything kind of snaps together pretty nicely here. So uh, yeah, I'm pretty proud of that work. No need to pat myself on the back yet though, I've got another mod to do. So yeah, just like that, looks good. So uh, anyways, what we want to get done here is we want to install this Bond Tech uh, LGX light right in here. But unfortunately, when we try to slot this in place, there's a little bit of a problem. Let's see if you can see it here. There's not a whole lot of light in there. Let's uh, try and turn my studio light on. Hold on, I'm trying to get this, uh, trying to get my little iPhone camera set up. All right, so as you can see, I've got my new Bond Tech LGX light on there. And I've got this repositioned um, cable chain holder that's just going to tie into this one bolt on the back of the machine. See, this wire's a little too tight here to make this work. All right, and then that should allow me to pull just a tiny bit of extra wire through. All right, so as you can see, we've removed our old Sherpa Mini mount and just replaced it with this more universal mount. Now, this one should be compatible with the Sherpa Mini, the Orbiter V2, as well as this LGX Lite. We got full range of motion here. So that works out great. I'll be sharing the CAD files for this new uh, mount with improved compatibility, as well as this little mount bracket on the back that lets us reposition that chain. So with all that out of the way, time to see if we can print with this thing. I think it should be pretty fun, so let's see if it works. All right, so after running my first print, I realized that the stepper motor is now spinning in reverse relative to the direction that it needs to go. You can see instead of feeding the filament in, it just spat it out the top. So what I'm going to have to do here is install a little stepper motor reverser. This is something that I wired up. It just switches one of the coils around 
and that basically reverses the direction of the stepper motor. There would be a way to do this in software if I had the normal clipper access to this machine, but that hasn't been released yet, so I'm just reversing the stepper motor using an electrical means instead of a software means. All right, we got our stepper motor reverser installed and we put our filament back in here. So let's try that print one more time. All right, so I wired this up incorrectly somehow, so I'm gonna have to fix it. All right, so I just kind of randomly switched two of the wires over, kind of based on something I saw online. So I just switched those two wires, the blue and the, uh, the red wire around. All right, so I finally got it working. It's extruding away right now. You can see it's sucking that filament into the hot end. If you look at that, it's working. Yay! There's our bomb tech LGX light. 